김우진 You're looking at the most professional artist in the world. Graceful as a swan. What goes on in that mind of his? I was racking my brain about it. Wanna know why? Because contrary to his calm smile, his phone's been ringing off the hook. Hi, I'm Blue Bear, 10 months newbie in the entertainment industry. I felt hard for the K-pop charm and joined 10X with dream and passion. They took those things very highly. Maybe it's because they were pretty new. Dreaming of the rosy future where I, under the fluorescent light, er, I mean, Ujin, bloomed. Something happened out of the blue. It was like a car crash right at the moment of joining the company. I'm gonna share with you guys the bumps and fumbles of my adapting to the entertainment company. Everyone suffers an unfair situation or two. Have you ever been in one? I hope for your sake that it never happens to you. See this picture? Super handsome, right? On one perfectly normal day in September of 2020, when this beautiful picture was taken, Ujin had to go through the most unfair thing in the world. Nothing new, it's just that some ding dong decided to type a couple made up stories and tweet about it. <whistles> Hashtag Ujin over party. Remember? Let's go back to September of last year. Such a beautiful weather for tweeting. And one day, because of a single tweet by some Twitterian, the whole K-pop scene started to boil to the point of explosion. I swear I thought the nuke was going off. It was started by at A1B3C4S9. Started tweeting like crazy. W dot U big three. A three-year-old could tell it was Kimujin from that clue with the message, protect yourselves. Then at A1B3C4S9 deactivated. Protect yourselves. After at A1B3C4S9's tweet, countless false accusations started pouring out. Ah, let me rephrase that. Ujin's haters started pouring out false accusations. One of which, at QP1QSOKW2X, God damn it, it's a long name, uploaded this ridiculous picture telling everyone that it was the evidence. That this person in this photo is Ujin. This person! Kim Ujin. What at QP1QSQKW2XQYOYK claimed was that the sweatshirt from Ujin's Instagram feed and the sweatshirt from the problematic photo was the same one. The upload date of the sweatshirt, April 29th. The day that person claimed to have met Ujin at the bar, April 29th. Coincidence? I think not. At first, I thought it wasn't that big of a deal. Why? Because it's not true. Thanks to that person, Ujin was on everyone's lips. I wish it was about his good looks, but life never works to your favor. And my first task on the job, filing complaints for the lawsuit. Laugh out loud. Who would have known? I'd be sitting in front of the computer screen capturing PDF files. <coughs> Ujin suffered this massive humiliation. It's hard even to list them one by one. And for the cherry on top of this pile of shit, this Saseng decided to publicly open Ujin's personal cell number on the internet. Have you ever seen your phone blazing up 24-7 and someone's on the other end all the time? It's fucking lunacy. It's uncanny. Every insult you can imagine from petty name calling to death threats flooded Ujin's phone. Over one single day, that lie became the truth at the blink of an eye. Our company's grand plan of shooting new profile pictures and working on his debut album to show his fans all these awesome things all went down the fucking drain. How scared would he have been? I feel terrible for not being there enough in this time of need. Anyhow, you all have been super helpful retweeting it that that lie became a very sensible truth. News articles poured out fanatically afterwards. Protect yourself. Taking at A1B3C4S9's advice, we felt that we really needed to protect ourselves. Have you ever heard of Hwapyeong? It's a disease especially observed in Koreans, and basically this is when you're falsely accused of something, and this unfair situation eats you up inside that your mental state symptomizes to physical illness. That is Hwapyeong. 
화병에 이거만한 게 없대요. 응? It's on medical papers. Google it. I got that. 화병. It felt like screaming to a freaking wall because that went on for months on end. I pulled so much all-nighters because of this, so please kindly bear with me while I rub it in everyone's face. Koreans in general love liquor. We usually drink soju, beer, somek, which is a mixture of the two, and makgeolli. We basically live on them. But how about whiskey? I'm not really used to it. How about you? Do you love whiskey? Whiskey? Nah, but my boss loves it though. I don't have a lot of whiskey fans around me, although I imagine hardcore aficionados would dig deep about it. For example, our boss you've been so curious about. He's a whiskey nerd. So in the midst of all this madness, he was like, Glenbergie? What's a Glenbergie? There's a kind of whiskey I don't know about. Am I the only one who didn't know? Talk about fanboy. When did this get imported into Korea? I would have known. And then went on searching frenzy over the internet. We all jumped on the wagon for the search. The glaring evidence to uncover the truth presents itself right before us. Wouldn't miss on that. At the office, everyone was investigating and detectiving like a freaking CSI. As it turns out, after careful investigation on the import company of the liquor, Glenbergy only recently started being imported between late 2019 and early 2020. It was pretty new to the market. Hmm, our boss was wise. It wouldn't be much of a hassle to locate the bar in which the problematic picture was taken if we follow the importer's distribution channel. There's a lot of different search tools these days. We tried Navis Smart Lens, Google Image Search and whatnot. The Glenbergy picture we were hoping to find wasn't popping up like we wanted, but we knew there had to be the original photo so we kept on looking. Look at this picture. It's square. What does it tell you? Square pictures equal Instagram size photos. It's a no-brainer, right? So our search moved on to Instagram hashtags. No hashtag Glenbergies in English. And no hashtag Glenberg is in Korean? People must have shown off if they drank a brand new liquor. It's human nature. So we started searching from hashtag Glen to hashtag Glen. We were this close to giving up when the Instagram showed us related hashtags. Huh? Hashtag Glenbergy 12 years? Bingo! Nerd saved the day. The whiskey nerd that is the CEO of our great company 10X was able to protect Wujin because of it. LOL. Keep on nerding out, y'all. Here is the undeniable proof. Job done, let's all go home. Or so we thought. Searched through the pile of hashtag needles for the hay and actually found the original photo. We even got the CCTV for that exact moment from that exact bar. We worked our behinds off, so take a look. Look at them setting up the whiskey nice and pretty for the Instagram photo right there. That's the historic moment this picture was taken, and it was all captured in the CCTV video. Fast forward, Bujin's nowhere to be seen, and most decisively, no women at the table, right? And most importantly, the upload date of this picture, the day at QP1QS OKW2XQYOYK claimed to have met Bujin was April 29th. But the date this original photo was uploaded was August 31st, eight days prior to the accusing tweet. Just by the timeline itself, it doesn't make sense. When the owner of the picture was informed that the photo was abused for false sexual harassment claim, the owner shared with us the DM sent by Teen Vogue editor with an explanation expressing absurdity. The evidence was compelling in favor of Ujin's innocence. Fuck yes. We were celebrating. I mean, we were at a dead end. We had absolutely zero silver lining. The only thing we had was integrity and the truth. And then, the evidence. We were over the moon. We did it! There's nothing stronger than the absolute truth. What the hell is a Glenbergy anyway? Let's drink it, and so on. Ah, but life never works to your favor. Damn. Our nights after nights of work with bloodshot eyes were all in vain with one single word of accusation. Photoshopped. 
They were saying we found the evidence too quick and that it didn't make sense. I never knew being so competent at our jobs was a crime. We're just that good. Bite me. They would never have imagined our boss to be a whiskey aficionado. Thanks to his nerdiness, the initial investigation turned out to be a super success. Contrary to the perfect job we've done, the situation got completely derailed. While we were on the search for the original photo for the whiskey and getting the CCTVs, another headache presented itself. Stop hassling us problems as if we don't have enough headaches. What happened was, oh, we were fanatically screaming out trying to prove our innocence when piled up malicious reports blocked Ujin's Instagram account. Remember the non-stop ringing of the phone? The reports happened at that same speed. I'm gonna finish up this talk later, have so much to say right now. That another problem was that our company was a fake company. Ha! What? I have been staying up all night gathering PDF files for the lawsuit. Did I just lose my fucking job? You know how everyone says one thing and you're slowly starting to believe that lie? It was confusing to say the least. It was like the Truman Show. Everyone was so exhilarated. Are you prepared for the shitstorm that may come your way if our company is a real one? FYI, impersonation is a legit crime. You know that, right? Fine. We get where you're coming from. You must have hated Ujin for some reason. Must have hated everything about him. Everything he says, his truth, even everyone else helping out Ujin. The fact that 10x was a fake company would make Ujin the real villain, right? Ooh, you can't be trusted because you're a fake company. Ujin doesn't even have a company and is a sad pretender, liar, and so on. He wanted to predicate everything false about Ujin. We had to prove in so many ways that 10x Entertainment was, in fact, a real company. We had to prove that we didn't do the things that we did not do and had to prove the very existence of the company which I go to work every morning. So tiresome. Anyways, here are all the documents we have to provide. See, here's our copy of corporate registration. And here's the business registration certificate. Oh, in the middle of all this, we even moved to a way bigger office. Got the verification to be a legit entertainment company. Look up 10x Entertainment from the list of registered companies on the Korea Creative Content Agency Integrated Information System. And then we put the company on the portal website map. Do come by with the neighbor road view. Google Maps not updated yet. You're always welcome to come by in person as long as you're ready for the two-week quarantine when you fly to Korea. Ah, right! Watch Ujin's first office tour vlog too. I'll put the link in the upper right. Lots of interesting comments there. Hold up. The problem's not over yet. Back to the beginning. Ujin's Instagram account had been blocked for weeks with the false reports. They were saying, why hide? Are you too scared? Why? Why would Ujin hide? Why? I mean, it's at your liberty to say whatever you like, but actions have consequences, even more so when you stone someone on a false accusation. Guys, come check this out. This is the terms of service for Instagram. Instagram is strict when it comes to criminals. Once proven guilty, you can never have your account back. Now, let's think in reverse. If you've never committed a crime, that means you can have your account back. Easy peasy, right? Okay, one last complaining. And of course I'm gonna complain again. We tried so hard, so very hard, to prove that your accusations were fake. To restore innocent Ujin's Instagram account. Long and tedious hours of patience and waiting. Instagram went through our documents very carefully. 
This took more time than you'd think. While we were trying so hard, you all kept on mocking Ujin. Anyways, Facebook is a trying company. No wonder they're a multinational conglomerate. We finally restored the account in months. What do you think it means? Let's read. We tried to make Facebook broadly available to everyone, but you cannot use Facebook if... You're under 14 years old here. You are a convicted sex offender. Instagram's hammer of justice is unforgiving to convicted criminals. By the way, did you know? In Korea, you can't be a convicted sex offender if you want to work in entertainment companies. This goes without saying that even when establishing one and hiring for entertainment companies, everyone, and I mean everyone, has to be squeaky clean when it comes to sexual offenses. We, of course, are all clean. I was curious because we're super close to closing up this episode. There's no one who still thinks we're a fake company, right? Does Twitter and Instagram put check marks on fake companies these days? Oh, and we applied for the silver button because we passed 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. Cops and everyone who's been supporting Ujin wherever you are, it's all thanks to you guys. <laughs> 이 영상이 마음에 들었다면 구독, 좋아요, 알림 설정. Translation is never simply transferring text from one language to another. In fact, text and language are only mere forms. Form. All written and spoken words are what we call language encompass a country's culture and furthermore the personal identity of the writer or the speaker. In my masterclass, I will show you how to translate without compromising the intention of the writer or the speaker, not simply transferring from one language to another. <coughs> Sorry, I've been watching a lot of masterclass videos. Um... Where was I? Uh, Twitter, Ding Dong Whiskey, Fake Company, Twitter. Ah, that's it. Here's another thing that's unfair. You guys read Ujin's Instagram post? It was reposted everywhere, translated in English. But technically, it was a mistranslation. Even an 8-year-old Korean kid would tell something was wrong. Kids today speak really good English, blows my mind. Let's see here. Oh, see? This is wrong from the start. Let's look at Ujin's Instagram post. The title, Apology Statement, wasn't even there in the first place. He was flabbergasted and was explaining himself in defense of the ridiculous accusations. Oh. 안녕하세요, 김우진입니다. Hello, this is Kim Woo Jin. You guys follow this, right? 오늘 황당한 일을 겪어서 팬분들에게 겸사겸사 근황 알릴 겸 글을 올립니다. Something absurd happened to me today. I wanted to catch up with the fans while I was at it. This word, 황당한, is the crucial point. Google translates this to simply weird. This is so very wrong. I mean, guys, think about it. You're lying in your bed and someone breaks your window and screams, that person sexually offended me and gathers everyone in the town up and fucking bails and no one believes a word you say. What would that be like? What that would be like is wow, I would like to roundhouse kick that fucking person in their stupid face. Phew. <sighs> Sorry. I get emotional just thinking about it. Anyways, back to the point. 트위터에 누군가가 이상한 루머를 퍼뜨리고 계정을 삭제하셨는데 Someone spread a strange rumor on Twitter and deactivated the account. 전 그분을 만난 적도 없고 언급된 곳에 가본 적도 없습니다. I have never met the person and have never been to the mentioned place. That's it. That is everything. What else does he have to say other than that? You don't apologize for something you didn't do. Apologize my ass. 팬분들 많이 놀라셨을 텐데 사실이 아니니까 너무 걱정 말아 주세요. My fans must have been shocked. Don't worry too much because it's not true. Again, the accusations were false. Take a look at this instead. My fans must have been shocked. Don't worry. Ujin must have been shocked the most and he's still caring for his fans. Look at it. Look. See how sweet this guy is? 그리고 전 최근 마음이 맞는 한 회사와 계약을 해서 솔로 활동을 위해 열심히 준비하고 있습니다. I recently signed with a company of the same mind and now preparing for my solo activities. Everyone went crazy here. I don't care whatever you say, I don't know, so shut up and wait for my solo debut. Oh, so much stupidity. Back to the first line. Something absurd happened. To catch up, he's writing. He confirmed that none of the accusations were true and he wanted to console the worried fans by telling them the good news of his signing. 회사에서 허위 사실 유포자에게 조치를 취할 예정이고 이후 대응은 회사에서 진행할 예정이니 너무 걱정 말아주세요. 
The company will be taking legal actions against the false accuser and further response will be taken care by them. Please don't worry. And see here? My company is preparing to take legal actions. Here. Wait for the shitstorm that will bring down on doorsteps of your lying asses because it's not done yet. 그럼 또 소식 전할게요. 감사합니다. I'll be in touch. Thank you. Now, I know some of you are still saying so much text. Here's a three-liner summary for those who just won't get it. 1. There was nothing to apologize in the first place. 2. Lawsuit is still ongoing. 3. Woojin's a sweet, sweet guy. Carelessly left embers can sometimes burn down the whole forest. It's a disaster no one wants to fathom. Once ember catches the wind, it spreads at an alarming rate and from then on cannot be extinguished by manpower. September 8th of last year, some inconsiderate person started a fire. Not just in my heart, but also my bosses, Ujins, and even my co-workers' hearts. All of them burnt to crisp. It must have been a tiny spark or an ember from a cigarette someone carelessly threw away. Turns out, there are a lot of people who don't take responsibilities for their own actions. You can launch a nuke with the touch of a button, and you say you don't take responsibilities for your actions, tapping on your little phones. What if that action burns down a person's life in whole? Can you still say that? For the past eight months, we started pouring water on the mountain on fire, planted new trees, and everything, but a scorched mountain can never return to life. Want to know what was frustrating even more? That fire spread not only to our company but also to the dearest fans who still believed in and supported Ujin. The haters openly ignored Ujin's fans on Twitter. Anyone who follows Kim Ujin or mentions him will be unfollowed. Yes, you, you're blocked. What? What if I show my support for Ujin? I'll be ostracized. I better stay down. So shy Ujin fans, who still love and support Ujin but cannot express themselves, kept piling up. Some actually have turned their backs because of the public opinion. Do you guys know the feeling when people slowly turn their backs to you one by one? We broke our backs trying to prove the innocence and all we got was criticism and mockery. Oh, what could we do? We were tired. Then, the mail inbox started to ring. When we thought everyone turned their backs, there they were, the people who stood still and supported Wujin. You are the oasis to the desert that is endless. There is no life without the cups. Cups not only sent the support, but also conducted their own investigations and shared the result on the SNS and even to the company. Listen close, this might cause a mild migraine because it's so complicated, but I'll make it less boring than your physics teacher, okay? Of course, we could open fire with their actual names, but just to avoid any future cyberbullying, please understand that we use their initials only. Anyways, let's get to it. As we uncover the data accumulated by the great detectives, there are two names that you should always keep in mind. R and TV. Remember these names. The first accuser, also known as at A1B3C4S9 on Twitter, uploaded the first tweet with not much of an impact. It's only when the powerful Twitterian with 5,000 followers retweeted this claim and this rumor began to blow up to proportion. The person who retweeted is this person, R. R said that the first accuser was a friend of hers. The account at A1B3C4S9 was created on September 1st of 2020 with the account name at Confess My Day when initially created. The name was changed prior to the accusing. Interesting. What we should focus on is that one of the followers for this account was R and also TV. It's highly probable that all three of them were acquainted. Of course, it was just a speculation at this point. The great detectives assumed that more important information would be there at the first accuser's Twitter, so they dug and dug and dug and then dug some more. In that process, they came across an email address. Look, it's quite odd for an email address. First up, it's long, and more dots than there should be in a regular email address. Our great detectives would never let this slip from their sight. They recognized where this email form was regularly used. Has anyone else guessed? At student dot. S-T-U-D-E-N-T. 
seven letters. Yeah, that's right. It's an email address for a university student. And there just so happened to be a suspicious international school located in Korea. This is the profile for a different student at the same school. Hmm? What? This email address. So familiar. Now let's get into it and compare the letters. We can see that the number of letters match perfectly with the reference. We won't reveal the whole spelling. We don't want to shine a bad light on the school itself. At first I thought it was like the Department of TV and Broadcasting. What is a TV? Now everyone, let's read together slowly. What was the name that we have to remember today? TV. That's right everyone, good job. We know that haters gonna hate. Hey, isn't that a stretch? There must be thousands of email addresses starting with TV. And how can you be sure it's that university email? What if it's just a coincidence the number of letters matched? At A1B3C4S9 equals a student at the university equals TV? Really? Hey, I won't be here talking unless we were absolutely sure we have our facts straight. Looking at TV's TikTok and Instagram sent to us by the fans, we know that this person spent the season in Korea, enrolled in that university. By the way, I found TV's account. Seems happy, looking peachy when I work all night thanks to you. Anyhow, we checked the fact that TV actually went to that university until August of 2020 by making an inquiry to the student council. And the fact checking was an overkill because TV willingly admitted. TV said, I have no idea about the email, blah blah, I will check it later because I don't access that email since I'm no longer linked to blah blah university. And that I did create the account at confess my day, but I don't own it now. I told R the password for the account. What? And R said that she doesn't know who Kim Woo Jin is. Really? Does R really not know who Woo Jin is? Who? Clearing my head, I thoroughly went through R's Twitter account. Doesn't know him, my ass. She happened to have tweeted on October 28th, 2019, one year prior to this whole fiasco, raging on about Ujin. And R was the one responsible for retweeting the first accusation and spreading the rumor. Stop changing your stories! I don't know, it wasn't me, it was someone else. If you don't know, you should have stayed silent. The best of friends, R and TV, when cornered with facts, were busy turning on each other and running away. Are you guys so good friends? Just curious. <clears throat> now to conclude. Both suspects were from Brazil. One of them, TV, is the owner of the account with the initial false accusation. R was the person with 5,000 followers who retweeted the story to actively spread the rumor. All of this, and I mean all of this, was put together from the investigations and information sent to us by the fans who still support Ujin. The great detectives that picked us up from the ground when we fell and put wings on our shoulders. Thank you so much from the bottom of our hearts. We love you. We're in the process of launching an international investigation with our lawyers. It's known to take some time, but we got time. It's not us whose asses are on fire, if you know what I mean. Wink. <sighs> good night, everyone. Sweet dreams, cubs. And good night to you, too. I bid you farewell. R and TV. Like I said in the beginning, it's no biggie, just the usual. Ever since I, Blue Bear, joined 10X, its staff increased in size one by one, and we each had our own job to do. But ever since the incident, every staff put aside their duties and came together to pull out our hair. All sought, everything zip. We all sought nothing but proving Wujin's innocence, collecting the evidence, filing complaints, with the occasional warning after the cyber investigation was launched. This. Drop what you're doing and run away when you have the chance. Run. Honestly, I cry from time to time. It hurt trying to prove something that wasn't true. It hurt. The dark and sad days when I myself and the very existence of me was denied. But still, I gathered myself, pulled my share of the weight. Some people do crazy shit to make lies the truth. We did what we could and proved everything. You could tell from our past videos. 
oh, don't be such a whiner. So it's over because it's proven to be not true? Because we won, it's all over now? Okay, we can drop it. Overworking got me so tired. I could whine to my boss for grabbing vitamins to make up for the sun I lost. Now, what else? Kim Woo Jin You're looking at the most professional artist in the world. Graceful as a swan. What goes on in that mind of his? So, you get it now? Do you think Woojin can be all, yeah, it's not me, get lost. Hey, hey this video shoot was so fun, ha ha ha. Could you have smiled so easily? Series of hates, malicious comments, unfathomable insults, stalking, and death threats. One after another, just kept coming. So, just a night of it would be enough to traumatize you for the whole month, right? Imagine going through this nightmare every single day. Ah, it's not even a dream. Imagine you're living it. If the luck doesn't work to your favor, it could happen like it happened to Ujin. Since September of last year, when the incident occurred, Ujin never could spend a carefree day. Every day must have been full of anxiety and pain. It broke my heart to see him smile for us like nothing was wrong with the world. Remember? We all know. The serious cyberbullying that's taking place in the entertainment business and the K-pop scene for the past few years. Countless gossips and rumors spread. Reckless invasion of privacy. Inhumane hate comments, not to mention unfiltered news reports carrying out these false facts. We witnessed how a person could break down from it. We felt sad, watching it all. Bullying can happen in any groups, school, workplace, or some random group of people, even in cyberspace where everyone who doesn't know each other comes together. Many K-pop singers, celebrity, and even people we pass by every day suffer such violence in the cyberspace. And most of what starts it is one careless comment. Maybe that person did it to gain empathy or maybe by just being so cruel, maybe really, really wanted it. This is quite serious, you know? What you think is nothing serious can crush a person's life and grab it by the throat. After going through something so terrifying, I think it's unfair to stay quiet because the victim was a celebrity. Famous or not, victims have the right to have a voice. And we should listen to it. So, don't we all want the same thing? To have no more victims, whomever that is, including Woojin. So to make a case for the victims, we'll be trying harder and harder. We'll do everything to protect Woojin, whatever that may be, and really put our hearts to it. And protect Kim Woojin and his fans who stood by him through thick and thin. Oh, and were you surprised because we reply to all your comments with our company official account? And because no other company does it? Whatever, who cares? We don't care what others think. We were pleasantly entertained by all of your mocking comments. Thanks for the interest. Still, someone might think that South Korea is such a faraway country, hours on the plane and numbers of transit, how would they fuck us up? Okay, to be frank, it's complicated. Double the work, double the cost. We have to soldier on through 16 hours of time difference and email the lawyer in California where Twitter HQ is and wait for the reply. Lots to do. Lots. But after a while, People from other countries become our neighborly friends and we might leave work and head home when the sun is rising, right? Like I said, I could whine to the boss about overworking. I still have my good old paycheck. I mean, I love you, Jin. Wink. Wait up. We have a lot of things we can still manage to do. I can do this all day. Thanks to the fans' interest and support, we collected helpful evidence and information too. There's an old saying in Korea, careless stones could kill a frog. By the careless stones cast by you, Ujin and the fans were deeply hurt. And we will come after you and make you rightfully pay for your actions. We wanted to make sure that there were no more victims like ourselves and that we should leave a record of our case on the internet. You might think we're overreacting, but I think somebody needs to step up to do the job. Don't you agree? Anyways, thank you for listening. I know it's been long. Lastly, my deepest gratitude for the fans who supported, loved, and trusted in Ujin. Thank you all. And don't you worry. 
We will never give up on you or our artists. Never. Thank you.